I mean, since I'm such a huge star and everybody likes me, it's really rough because people want to give me everything for free and be my friend and take me places and show me wonderful things. And it's just terrible. It's, you know, it's really hard being so loved by everybody. You had two sold out nights here in Toronto. Is that what's been happening everywhere? Shows? Well, I, I think the reason that we sold out twice in Toronto is we're playing the size venue that reminds me of Flea's bathroom in his house. It's kind you're, of, you're playing where the concert hall? Yeah. It's huge. Is that huge? Oh, yeah. It looks For like a garage to me. Well, then you're used to selling out huge places then. But then I, the nice good. thing about coming to Canada is we're huge. Yeah. It's all relative, isn't it? I got attacked coming out of the Lenny Kravitz show the other night. You guys performed on, on stage with him? Well, we went to see Lenny Kravitz and he asked us, would we come out and play on Let Love Rule? And so we said, all right, and we went out there and... and, and play, is the word. Well, do whatever. <laughs> we went out on stage with Lenny, and Lenny was rocking, and we were rocking, and I mean, we didn't, you know, pick up cellos or anything like that. But mm -hmm. Flea did get down on his hands and knees, and he started doing a, a Fela's wife head-banging routine. Reverse, reverse Fela's wife. Because they do it with their buttocks, so I was using my face. And he smashed his head on the ground. Oh. Yes, I did. He did. I smashed my face into the ground for Lenny Kravitz. And you cut your finger last night? And last night I chopped my fingers up. But when we came out of the, the, the backstage from the Lenny show, we got attacked and it, and it dawned on me that we're huge in Canada. How many people attacked you? I don't know how many people were there. I don't know, but I just don't understand why they want to attack like that. I, you know, I think that's really crazy. They were hurting me. I mean, why do they want yeah. to do that? I mean, when you were a kid, if you liked somebody, did you jump on them and start screaming at them and yelling, pulling at them? Well, I didn't, but I remember I went to see David Cassidy at the Montreal Forum, and the girls there were rabid. They would have attacked him if they had a chance. They would have grabbed him for sure. So have you, are you becoming sex symbols? Um, I, I think we're... Anthony's we're, a sex symbol. Am I a sex symbol? He's a sex symbol. I think Flea well, you both got I think grabbed. Flea, I, I, think, I am by no means a sex symbol. I would say that if anybody <laughs> in the band was considered a sex symbol, it would be Flea. I don't think so. But it, it, it just, it's with men, though, for Flea. <laughs> like, whenever yeah. we play a show, you see like a lot of like sexy skinhead men shouting out Flea's yeah. name in the middle of the show. Well, see, the thing is, it's like for the girls, like, oh, Anthony, he's so beautiful, and his muscles and long hair, and oh, golly, he's so sexy, and the way he moves, and sings, and he's so beautiful. And with me, it's like, dude, you're so awesome. Uh -huh. Wow, dude, wow. Flea is God, dude. Uh -huh. Did you get into rock and roll to get babes? Did I? I never got into rock and roll. What are you into? I, I just, I, there's an accident. I just kind of stumbled into this predicament. And I, I never really had any intention of being a rock and roller. It's just that all of my best friends were great musicians. And, and they felt sorry for me, so they had me. You felt sorry for him. He was like a wayward dog. He was like a little puppy wandering around. And we said, here, take this microphone. Keep yourself busy. And was it hard at the beginning? Was it hard? Were you shy ever, or was it always? Uh... It's not. It's, it's not hard when when there's a, a particular sound of cosmic love and funky friendship, like bursting out of these people's fingers and amplifiers. You don't even have to do anything. It's kind of like automatic pilot. You know, all of a sudden this this sound comes out, and it just kind of carries you along, and you just roll with the punches. I heard that you guys are into things like shamanism and and rituals, and to me it seems like the band is, is a bit of a boys club or a men's club. We have some silly little rituals. Like what? Well, every time before we get ready to play, we have a soul circle where we all hold hands and we give each other little loving antidotes, and then we slap each other in the face, and we hug each other. You're telling me the truth, you're making it up. No, I'm telling It's the truth. It's the damn truth. It's the, truth. It's the damn truth. What other things? Well, you know, the thing is, it's like, I mean, how could it not be like a boys' club? I mean, we're all boys, and we play in this band together, and we travel, you know, and it's like we've been doing this. The Red Hot Chili Peppers have been together for almost nine years now. <clears throat> and it's like we travel all around the world all together, and we, you know, we do this thing this, that we worked on and created and built, and we're all together all the time doing this thing, and yeah. You know, and it's difficult, too, because when you're with somebody like that all the time, you know, I mean, it's just like living with a family, you know, with brothers or sisters or whatever, when you're all together. Sometimes you want to throw a vacuum cleaner at them, you know? Except that you have the added pressure of the whole world watching yeah, well, every it's like, move that you're making. 
Ooh. Back off, baby. I'm just getting the little kiss. Uh, no, I'm just no, no, the no, no. kiss with size. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, this is a little kiss. You know, people are watching this. You're making me blush. You're making You're me blushing. blush. You're not blushing. You're making flea blush. You know, I'm blushing. Do you know how many letters I'm going to get? Because this, people are going to yell at me that I insisted that you kissed me. Do you know she how told me gets? before the interview if I didn't kiss her <laughs> that she would not come to see this play tonight. So. Can I ask you guys something? And I'm probably going to get myself in trouble for asking this. And please be delicate in the responses. But what is it about you guys and your penises? You seem to have more than any man that I've ever met this outrageous <laughs> This outrageous obsession with your penises. Why? Why? What makes you think that? Why? Why do you say that? Well, in every, in every interview that I've ever done, that's pretty much takes up half the interview. Well, but we didn't bring it up. That's that's because you know what it is is, you know, the existence of of sexual energy is, is, is such a, a an everyday part of life. It's such a, a natural aspect of life that that we end up relating to it without any shame, right? Because it's just, it's there, but it's not just the penis, it's also the vagina, the wonderful ruby fruit jungle known as the vagina. And when, when, when you feel so comfortable, you know, with a particular aspect of life such as sex and you sing about it and it's part of your music and it's part of your energy, and, and you're not afraid to be comfortable with it, then then you're normal, in my opinion. But you know, if you're like a right-wing reactionary judo Christian, you know, freak who thinks that sex is terrible, then you ignore it, and it becomes something sick and, and terrible. And and if we just you know we we don't have to hide from anything. Can you go too far on the other way, though? Well, I think people go too far. They they get the idea that we're comfortable with our sexuality, and so you know they're so freaked out by the idea that somebody isn't uptight about their sexuality that they key in on that and they think that that's all we're about. But we're about a half a billion other things as well. You know, we just we just don't shy away from our dicks. You know, because there's no reason to. Mm -hmm. I asked for this, so it's okay. Don't worry about it. Uh, what's interesting is listening to your record and even reading interviews, looking at photographs of you guys, even meeting you in person, you seem to be concentrating more on the music this time than on the antics. That's not true. I mean, that's just public perception. It, it's like I think the people that, that have, that we, maybe we've made more of an effort to like in the, the media to, to, uh, to like stress the music mm -hmm. more. But, uh, you know, we've always concentrated on music. You know, it's always been of, of vital importance to us, and it's always been the thing that made us do everything that we do. And the core and the reason for our whole being is playing music. So, it's you know, it's not true. It's all media perception. You know, we've always music has always been the number one main thing for us. It's all we, you know, it's the whole point of being in the band is playing music. Soul, sacred love. Why don't we play some music, and then we'll come back and chat way more. What are we playing? We're gonna play "Give It Away." All right. Good song. Thank you. Very good song. Uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers, is give it away and be back with more from these guys. How do you know what camera? And of course, Red Hot Chili Peppers, who made that video? Uh, a really, a really nice guy named Stefan Sednawi, who was a Frenchman. Beautiful. Yeah, he did a really good job. Where are you going? Job. Where are you He's going? just getting his juice. He's just okay. getting his juice. Yeah, we, back. we sat down and we... Really and the microphone here. Do, okay. We want to hear what you're going to say. There we go. We sat down to, to find a video director and we looked at about 20 reels of different people and it all looked like the same person. And then we saw this one particular reel and we said, who's that? We want this guy. What else has he done? Um, he did a video called Cosmic for Ziggy Marley. And he does pictures. Tell me a story about what it's not gonna look like. No. All right, Never mind. Oh, uh, come on. No. I fixed your microphone. Um, okay. You don't have to. And a little bit bark on command. Um, well, before we made the video, he, Stefan said, now he showed me this picture of a girl on a rock. And I didn't know what we were going to do in the video, and he showed me this picture of a girl on a rock. And I said, he said, you see this picture of the girl on the rock? And I said, yes, I see it. I see the picture of the girl on the rock. And he said, well, the video, he speaks in a French accent. You see, he's French. And he said, it's not going to be like this, the video. It's not going to be like this. And I went, ah, it's not going to be like a girl on a rock. So basically, we had no idea what kind of video we were doing. We just knew that we were going to the desert and we were going to paint ourselves silver and get smart in the desert. He has a real fashion sense about him. It's very fashionable. He, he used to be a model. Do tell. And he wears a dress. No. Yeah. Oh, well. 
So uh, let's talk about you guys and, and fashion. I know that you were awarded something by the uh, U.S. knit manufacturers for the most <laughs> innovative use of, of knitwear for the um, proper placement of socks. Erica. Yes. You making that up? No. Erica. It was, it was written down in black and white. I could show you after the interview. No. I would. Would I make that up? What? Can I ask I'm, you a question? Yes. What color are your underwear? I forget. What color are check? I can't what know. Check? I'll tell you after. All right. Okay. <laughs> right out of that one. Phew. Thank you. So, have you won any other fashion awards? Well, Anthony was going to be on the cover of In Fashion. Were you? They kicked me off for Drew Barrymore. <laughs> I took all these pictures to be on the cover of a fashion magazine, and then Drew Barrymore came along and they kicked me off for her. For her? Yeah. But I think that really kind of sums us up in fashion. Or perhaps it sums no, we, up we, in we, fashion. We've really always been the masters of low fashion, of no fashion, of low dog, low brow, get a hoe fashion. <laughs> That's our fashion. Well, it certainly works. It's working? Yeah, it's working. Is that why your eyes are glimmering like that? Well, actually, and I'm also getting a little embarrassed, and I have a bit of a cold, so all things considered. She has a cold, and, and, and she has bronchitis, and she went to the doctor, and the doctor said, just take some codeine. So she's fine now. I'm not fine. It hasn't gone away. All right, well. Let's talk about the <laughs> album. Let's well have a few coin leaves while you're at it. Take a bottle of champagne, you'll be fine. Let's talk about the, um, the album. You recorded it in some alleged haunted house. What effect did that have on the actual music, or did it? I, if I would answer the question, but then after the interview, Flea would say, you were blabbermouth and you were hogging all the answers, so I'm going to let Flea answer. I have nothing absolutely to say, so I want to let you No, there's a big old mansion in the Hollywood Hills, and when we were writing these songs for this record, Rick Rubin was there with us, the bearded wonder, the mighty Rick Rubin. And I think he got a sense that the songs we were writing were very warm and, and gritty and funky and dirty, and they didn't belong to go into a studio. And it wasn't right for like the sterile, clinical, anal retentive, secretarial, greasy, aluminum foil type of a vibe that a studio has. He said, how would you guys like to make this record in a house? And he said, yeah. And so he found this big, beautiful house, and we built a studio in the house, and the house was haunted with these spirits. And we all had bedrooms in the house, and we hired a psycho chef to cook food for us, and we never had to leave the house. And we lived with the spirits. And you know, we did. We made our music, and we woke up, and we read the paper, and had coffee, and made music. And but did it affect the music? The fact that this place was, you what, felt spirits there. Do you I think mean, it the, had an the, effect? The music was written, but just being in that type of an environment affected our whole state of mind. You know, because we weren't pressured by the clock, and it was just. A, I mean, that was the ultimate funky monks boys club right there. Just like being in the house with the same four guys and getting along with each other for a month and a half. That. You can hear all about it on our new video coming out October 29th called Funky Monks on Warner Brothers Records and Tapes Videos. It's a home video. It's called Funky Monks. And we'll be marketing it to the community at large. And you can hear about it and find all about the wacky time those crazy chili peppers had holed up with the haunted ghost in the haunted mansion deep in the Hollywood Hills with that crazy guy, Rick Rubin. Is that it? That's good? That's good? You guys were in movies. Were you, were you in that Chet Baker film? Yes. How did that happen? We were watching it. That's free. You were sitting there watching him like he was the coolest guy in the world. Um, well, he was a really cool guy. So what, when did, how did you meet him? How did you hook up with him? Um, Bruce Weber just asked me to be in it. So you weren't actually, were you, it was in Cannes, wasn't it? Were you, uh... Um, I, I, they, they filmed in Cannes, but I didn't go to Cannes. So how did you hook up with, with Bruce Weber? Because was he was taking a picture of our band. And he said, I want you to sit beside Chet Atkins and look like you're interested. Chet Baker. I mean, Chet Baker and, and look like you're interested? Um, we just started talking about music, and we spoke about Chet Baker. And I grew up um, listening to Chet Baker, and I'm a really big fan of his trumpet playing. Uh, huh? And his singing, too. But as a kid, I was much more into his trumpet playing, because I played the trumpet as a kid. So I was always checking out trumpet playing. Oh. Yeah, he's a great okay. singer. We're going to go to commercial break, and then we're going to come back and talk some more, OK? OK. All right. So we'll be back right after this so much. Later. We're yeah. going to go to Vancouver in January, and um, I'm probably going to see my old in-laws when we get there. Oh, that's very nice. Yes. Carolyn Zeviar and Anna May Zeviar. Would you like they're to say hello to them now? <laughs> Would you like to say their names alone? <laughs> the Zeviars, they're, they're in Victoria. you have any other, any nice. other Canadian connections with the band? With the band? Yep. Well, I think we made one with you now. Yes. I'm going to tell you a little secret about Erica. 
she shaves her pubic hair into a mohawk. You stop it. It's true. You know, it's just because true. the show is live and we can't edit these things no, but out. What, but that, I'm, just, I'm just sharing a little secret with the listening audience. Do you want to have a question from one of the guys outside? Yeah, I want to talk to the guy with the dildo. All right. Stop it now. We're going to have to stop the interview. Stop I it. Used he's the one. He's the one. He's the one. Okay, the but shh. Okay. Shh. Can you all hear us? Yeah. 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 You just pick, pick the guy that you want to ask a question or the girl. Like the, the guy with his fly open and slip <laughs> in his head, that guy. Okay, okay. Charles Manson, what would you like to say? One question. You can ask a question. Ask we a question, can hear Charles. You. Put my clothing start on can you put it up, clothes. Sylvie? Crank it, Sylvie. Okay, say it up, put it up. What did he say? I got a clothing store right up the street. If you guys come, all the shit you want free. A clothing? This is not a promotional spot. Oh, this is a. No. a, a and this is your this chance is to intellectual ask him. intercourse. Well, I'm into, wait, hold on. I'm into a free pair okay. of shoes or something. You want some free shoes? I, you, you over there in the glasses. What's your question today? You? Yes. Ask your question. What's on your mind? <laughs> what do you say? When's the last time I ejaculated into Melvin Marcos' Stop shoes? It. <laughs> Stop it! Okay, we're gonna end this interview now because you're causing big I, trouble. No, I, I was just you. repeating the question. I, do that. I was just you know repeating that I've the question. I've waited my whole life to do that to end an interview because fans have misbehaved and you've given me the op absolute no, we're opportunity. No, perfect gentleman. Yeah, you are. Okay. Say something. No, no, no. Say something to me. No. Say anything. No, he's a gentleman. No, he's a gentleman. Hey, have I said anything that's slightly offensive once? No, we do have yeah. slobber. <laughs> I'm very slobber. No, three you It's him that's a troublemaker. I'm not a troublemaker. You're a troublemaker. I'm not a troublemaker. How much does the controversy help the band? Which controversy? All of them. We don't have any controversies. Oh, okay. And You're controversial. You're really pissing me no, off. Oh, come on now. <laughs> and you know, I've been arrested for doing less. Oh, yes. Is that it? Are we just, are we ending here right like that? Come what on, I, go What start. I won't do for you, I've done at half price for others. Thank you very much. No. This is a Red Hot Chili Peppers high ground, and we're going to end this interview right now. Why are we ending? No, because you're trouble. No, go we're not play the trouble. video. Go play the video.